Hey, Mom. What's up? Still on for the movie later? It starts at 7.10, right? I have no idea why you want to see 80 for Bradley, but you're paying, so that's fine by me. Oh, uh, hi, honey. Um, I think maybe I should skip this week. I'm really sorry. I hope I haven't put you out. No, no, not at all. Is everything okay? Are you feeling all right? Have you been keeping up with the new medicine? Yes, yes, it's not that. Believe me, your father wouldn't have it any other way. He's been on me like white on rice. So what is it then? Well, if I'm being honest, it's the money. The money? You mean the dinner and movie? Well, yes, among other things. Well, uh, I mean, I could pay for it, Mom. It's no problem. Ugh, I, I don't even know if I'm in the mood now anyway. I thought you guys were doing okay. You have Dad's pension and you're still working. Well, we've come upon some recent uh, unexpected expenses. Oh, okay, like the cars or something? No, honey, it's your brother. He's in a little bit of trouble again. Oh, no. What did Mitt do this time? He didn't get arrested or anything, did he? No, no, thankfully that hasn't happened yet, but it's something rather odd. Well, if it involves Mitt, I just assume it's something odd. What is it this time? It can't be any worse than the time he invested all of his graduation money into crypto. Yes, it can. It can be much worse. Oh no, tell me what's going on already, please. Okay, so your father was looking through his credit card bills and he found all sorts of mysterious charges. What kind of mysterious charges to wear? Well, that's the thing, they were all these weird, obscure internet companies with foreign names. And I mean thousands and thousands of dollars over the last month over three separate cards. It didn't make any sense. Foreign names? Could you tell what language they were in? I'm getting to that, would you be patient? Alright, alright, I'm sorry. Well, Dad passed it on to your cousin Angus, who's good with these things, and he did a bit of research. Okay, and what were they? They were internet girl websites. Internet girls? Uh, you, you mean like um, adult content? Well, I guess, although Mitt isn't much of an adult. A 30-year-old boy. But I know what you're talking about. This isn't my first rodeo, but uh, this is different. This is some whole new freaky bit of business. Okay, so internet girls... Oh, wait. Mom, do you mean only cams, girls? Well, I don't know what you call it. I'm not into that sort of thing. All I know is that we've essentially funded the college education of some Bulvarian girl with tattoos named Franca. Oh my god. Well, what does he have to say for himself? I don't know. He hasn't come out of his room since yesterday. Which isn't good when his room is the basement. I know. I really need to do a load of laundry today. I just can't believe my son would stoop to this, having to pay poor, desperate girls online for... Thrills? Well, maybe it's not for thrills. Have you ever thought about that? What do you mean? I mean, Mitt's the loser of the family. I'm not being mean. I'm just being real. Mitt has had his challenges. Let's put it this way. Well, don't feel bad. Every family has to have one. These days, a lot of families have more than one. Look at your friend Claire, for instance. Both of her kids are messes. Well, I suppose messes are subjective these days. I don't judge anyone's family or how they run them. Lord knows I'm not perfect in that regard, and I certainly don't judge anyone's sexuality, but... But that wasn't his money to spend, Mom. He stole from you. Don't you realize that? Well, of course I do. Don't jump down my throat. I'm not one of these mothers who makes every excuse in the book for their son when they screw up. So what's Dad doing? I can't believe he hasn't thrown him out the window. Oh, he's beside himself, absolutely beside himself. And he hasn't been able to throw him out of anything because he's been too busy spending time at lawyers' offices. And spending what little we have left of our savings to see if we can try to at least get a little bit of it back. And he's just sitting down there in his weird little dungeon, sulking? Yeah, he's upset. Oh, he's upset? That's right, because now that he's cut off and he can't contact his little schmoopy poop con artist girlfriend, he doesn't know what to do with himself. So what has he said about this girl Franca? That he loves her. Ugh. And even better, that she loves him too, and she wants to finally move to America to live her dream of becoming a software designer and, of course, marry my son. Oh, marriage, huh? This girl moves fast. 
Oh no, it wasn't fast. It was a slow-moving process. A clever, methodical plan to squeeze my idiot son dry. And guess what? It worked. And now we'll be lucky if we're not out on the street. Mom, don't worry. That's not going to happen. We'll figure something out, I promise. Okay? Okay, fine. But what am I going to do about Mitt? What is there to do with him? I'll talk to him. Oh, Britta, be easy on the boy, please. For your mom. He may be a useless little turd, but he's my son. Yeah, well, just leave it to me. Hey, little bro. What are you up to? Oh, uh, hey, Britta. Nothing much. Just watching some Lord of the Rings. You? Well, certainly not that. Yeah, yeah, you're too cool for that. Whatever. I guess I just like things a little more... Based in reality? Oh, so you're saying sci-fi and fantasy is stupid? And that it's for people who are trying to escape this world? I think it's whatever floats your boat, but you should be careful. There's a lot of opportunities for distraction out there. Who are you? My mother? What are you even talking about? Come on, Mitt, don't play dumb. I know what happened, and I know you're too afraid of Mom and Dad to come out of the basement. Oh, whatever. You don't know anything, believe me. Mom only tells you the bad stuff anyway. Oh, only the bad stuff? Bad stuff like you bankrupting them because you think you're in love with some Bavarian? Bulgarian. Franca is Bulgarian. Get it right. And I don't think I'm in love with her. I know I am. Mitt, don't you get it? This is her job. Her job is to bleed lonely guys like you dry. Yeah, I know that. But for us, it's different. I know you don't believe us, but it is. We're in love. Oh, you're in love. Really? So when's the wedding then? Well, we haven't talked about anything like that. One step at a time, you know? So do you have any plan whatsoever? Yeah, she's coming over here. She's moving. I guess mom didn't tell you that part. Well, how convenient. Oh, right. She's going to school here. I think I heard a little bit about that. Oh, good. So mom did tell you that part. At least she's told you something real. Mitt, there is no school. It doesn't exist. Don't you get it? It does so exist. I should know. I helped pay for it. No, you didn't. Mom and Dad paid for it. You didn't do anything but steal their credit cards. Oh, is that what they said, huh? Well, are you disputing it? Uh, well, um, no. But big deal. That would have been my money eventually anyway. And how do you figure that? Well, it would have ended up being my inheritance. Oh, so you think that in the remaining 25 to 35 years our parents have left, they just wouldn't need $200,000? You know what, Britta? You just wouldn't understand anyway. It's not even possible for you two. Oh, really? And how do you figure that? Because you've never been in love, that's why. Oh, I've never been in love, Mitt? Yeah, that's right. Well, excuse me, I didn't realize that you were an expert authority on the love and inner emotional life of Britta. Well, trust me, it's a scary thing to be an expert on. Oh, shut up, Mitt. You are so ridiculous. You're too arrogant and thick-headed to realize that I'm trying to help you. How? By harassing me about my love life and telling me who I can and can't love? How is that helping me? I call that hurting where I come from, sister. We come from the same place. Well, you could have fooled me. Look, you idiot. Don't you see what's going on? Franca, if that is her real name, is not into you. And she's not moving over here. She's duped you. Or her company has. This is what they do to lonely young men like you. I'm sorry to have to put it that way, but it's the truth, Mitt. The only question is, can you be strong enough to see it, to take responsibility for what you've done? And what have I done? Nothing. Mitt, you bankrupted our family over a cam girl. I'm going to marry her. Oh, please. Ha! And then Franco will be your sister-in-law, and none of you are going to be invited to the wedding. How do you like that? Then how are you going to pay for it? Oh, shut up. Mitt... I understand this isn't entirely your fault. I know you've had your problems, socially, I mean. Well, I've always had a hard time making friends. I know. That's why I hate seeing you like this. Like what? Finally happy for once in his miserable life? No, I hate seeing you betrayed. Plus, you were happy once. With Michelle, remember? You guys had a good time together. Oh yeah, Michelle. Well, that didn't work out. Yeah, but it was good for a while. I know Mom and Dad were happy. Well, there were problems. I know. I, I heard that she broke up with you. That's okay, though, Mitt. Sometimes these things happen. Uh, no. Where did you hear that from? 
Well, I, I think Mom told me, if I remember correctly, she said that she ghosted you at a strawberry festival. No, no, totally untrue, totally false. Well, okay, then what happened then? That girl was just too, I don't know, clingy. Clingy? To you? Yeah, plus her calves were too big. Oh, please. What? What's the big deal? She was clingy. Her, her calves? These are your excuses? Mitt, you should be happy if someone is clinging to you. You should be grateful. In fact, you should cling back for dear life. What do you mean? I, I thought clingy was a bad thing. Not for you, it's not. For you, it's a good sign. Oh, well, I guess I never thought of it like that before. You can't just be so particular all the time. You aren't exactly perfect yourself, Mitt. What do you mean? What's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. I'm just saying you're no Chris Pine is all. Oh, what? So I'm ugly now? No, I didn't call you ugly. You know what, Britta? You almost had me there for a minute, but I see right through you. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, just trying to put me down out of your own petty little jealousies. Wow, you really do have quite the opinion of yourself, don't you? You know what? I'm done with you for today. Besides, I have a date at eight. Oh, yeah, sorry. I guess you don't want to be late sitting down at your desktop. Whatever. What time is it in Bulgaria, though? Like 9 a.m.? You must be the first meeting of the day. Shut up, Britta. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Hi, sweetie. How are you today? Oh, hey, Daddy. What's up? How are you? <sighs> oh, no. Now what? I'm sorry. I guess I should have given you a chance to tell me how you're doing before I unload all of my problems. I, I think he's kind of everyone's problem now, Dad. It it's okay. He's my only son, Mid is, and look at him. Scammed by some woman in Bulgaria. Unbelievable. And your money, no less. Ugh, sorry for the reminder. That's the thing, you know. I if it was his money, I'd just feel kind of bad for him. You would? Well, I, I mean at least a little. You know how your brother's always been, very socially awkward, very nervous around girls, so I understand an easy looking opportunity comes along, he takes it. But I'd like to think that your mother and I taught him at least some basic common sense. Mitt and common sense? Maybe you're asking for too much too soon, Dad. Well, the thing that gets me is, I can see being conned, but to steal your own parents' money, to just give away like that. To some strange woman. I mean, who does that? Something's missing. Something's missing, all right. Well, your mother is beside herself. She's asking me to ask the company if they can take me back. Oh my gosh, Dad, really? It's come to that already? Well, it's either that or officially file for bankruptcy. Ugh, I could kill him for this. You worked so hard to retire. We had that big party. I know, I know. And to think that you'd have to come out of it just to pay off his debts just make me want to throw up. I I'm sorry. Would you stop it, please? You're depressing me. I know. I'm sorry. Well, the financial stuff is one problem. We have other ones, too. Like what? What else could there be? Well, like your brother. Besides all this money business, the boy has a serious problem. I think you're right. I'm making fun of him, but maybe I shouldn't. Well, he stole and lied. Ain't no excuse for that. You're right, there never is, especially for Franca in Bulgaria and her college education. But the kid needs help. This isn't normal behavior. No, it definitely isn't. And I mean, let's face it, he's never been exactly right, but he is my son, and I feel I must protect him. But who's going to protect you, Dad? If he wasn't your son, if this was anybody else, you wouldn't think twice about turning him in. Wait, are you saying I should turn him into the police? For stealing my credit cards? Oh, Dad, come on. I'm his big sister, but I'm not that cruel. Do you really think that would be the best thing for him? A kid like that going to jail? Well, that's why I was about to tell you that you were out of your freaking mind. So what do you suggest instead? Well, there's rehabs for places like this, I, I think. Rehabs? Like, drug rehabs? Yeah, kind of. More like... Behavioral health centers, I guess. You mean like special rehabs for boys addicted to Bulgarian cam girls? Well, basically, yes. Boy, I didn't realize it was such a problem these days. Well, it's a whole new world, Pops. 
Well, it's not my world. Mine went out of fashion a long time ago. Whatever happened to... May I hold your hand, or shall I have this dance for crying out loud? Well, my friend Steve's a counselor. I'm sure he knows more about it. I, I could ask him. Yes, would you please ask him? And no rehab day spas in Palm Springs, all right? I can barely afford for him to stay in a dumpster at this point. Say, Dad, that's not a bad idea. Nah, your mother would kill me. Oh, come on, we can get him a really nice, shiny new green one, and we'll come visit every Sunday. Mitt moving out? Uh, one thing at a time, honey, let's deal with this first. Mitt, where are you? Where did you go? We just want to talk about this. No, there's nothing to talk about. There's no way I'm going to some scary rehab with a bunch of weirdos. I'm not like that. I'm not like them. Well, we can discuss that at a different time, but would you at least come back to the house and talk to us? This counselor is a really nice guy, Mitt. He used to be in the same kind of situation. He'd really understand you. Oh, so he's just another loser like me. So why would you just send a loser to help a loser? Well, he's not a loser anymore. This is what I'm talking about, Britta. All this judgment and guilt. Can you really blame me for hiding it for so long? Well, I've never thought about it like that before. Yeah. Maybe I was just ashamed of myself, you know, and... and... Yes, Smith. Go on. And maybe I just don't know who to turn to, you know? I was just... just... Yes? You were? Just lonely, I guess. Oh, Mitt, it's okay to be lonely. Everybody gets lonely, but there are better, less destructive outlets to help it. Oh, yeah, like what? You know, like... Uh, group bowling. Oh, gee, that sounds like a barrel of laughs. Well, it is if you find the right people to do it with, and I know you have your people out there, Mitt. And maybe even a girl? Maybe even a girl. In fact, I'm sure of it. But you have to get out of these cycles. You have to break these habits. I know, I know, but it's hard. I'm getting older. And I think maybe it's time to move out of Mom and Dad's basement once and for all. You mean, move out? You've tried it before. Well, that just didn't really work out, though. Well, you have to give it some time. A new roommate can be tough at first. I still don't always get along with mine. Mm, no. No? No what? No to moving out of Mom and Dad's. I just can't do that. But... Why not? Well, what would I do for food? Um, eat it? But what would I do without mom's cooking? I mean, that would, like, totally mess up my routine. Your routine? It may even be unhealthy to take such a drastic step so quickly. <sighs> Look, Mitt. Yeah, what? I'm starting to think that maybe this rehab isn't for you. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's what I keep saying. Uh, thanks for finally listening to me, gosh. Yeah, I'm thinking... You just never grew up. Uh, what? Yeah, it's not addiction or anxiety or depression. You're just a spoiled, entitled brat. Yeah, well, whatever. Mom and Dad will take care of me. They always do. You sure about that? Huh? When Mitt returned to the intervention, and after a long talk and careful consideration, it was decided that the rehab facility wouldn't be the best course of action for him. No, the best thing to do was what they should have done a long time ago. So they did it. The moving vans arrived bright and early one Monday, and by noon, Mitt was packed and heading to his friend's apartment to sleep on his couch. Although it was difficult for all of them, Britta helped her parents adjust. She found them a good bankruptcy lawyer, and it was all handled with as little pain as possible. Eventually, after a lot of therapy and promises, they welcomed Mitt back into the family. Three months later, he stole his mother's visa card, drove to a Walmart parking lot, and tried to contact Franca, where he was later arrested. <laughs>